Hello everybody and welcome back to another tutorial. Um, I had a question regarding how to get LCPFR working with uh, the cracked version of GTA because I made two separate tutorials for downgrading GTA 4 from the Steam version. One tutorial uses a serial key and Games from Live which re-enables multiplayer. The other tutorial is using a serial key bypass and there is no multiplayer support. So, uh, what I'm going to do is I am going to um, I'm going to be installing LCPDFR from start to finish. So everything that I do on my directories and that you see in my videos. Now this isn't going to be 100% what I do because something like um, vehicles, for example, I'm only going to be installing like one car. Um, just to kind of give you guys an idea of how to do it. Um, so it's not going to be 100%, but you'll get the idea and you'll know how to do it yourself. That's the important thing here. So uh, I've already went ahead and made different folders and each step we're going to go through them. And then over here I have my completely clean version of GTA 4. This is the exact copy that I did in my last tutorial, um, which has to do with the serial key bypass method. So, um, what we're going to do is also before, I should say before I begin, everything that is right here in these folders will be linked in the description, so you guys can, you know, download the exact things and follow along, however you want to do it, um, but you don't have to use these exact things, you can kind of use whatever you want, especially when it comes to, like, vehicles and peds, weapons, you can really do all that however you want, the idea is just to show you guys how to do it. So... Since I'm doing this from start to finish, I anticipate that this tutorial is going to be long, but I would rather do one big tutorial instead of like, you know, five or six smaller tutorials. I think one bigger tutorial is just kind of the way to get started. So, uh, without further ado and me still rambling on two minutes in, uh, let's go ahead and just jump right into it. So, starting with our clean directory, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the main folder here. And we have a few things. So what I like to do with my directories is when I first make a new directory, the first thing I always install is an ENB. So for this particular tutorial, I'm going to be using Cry ENB version 3. Like I said, you guys can use whatever ENB. Just know the installation may be um, a little bit different when it comes to configuration. But as far as actually the files, they should be pretty, pretty uh, similar. And most stuff comes with a readme anyways. So for Cry ENB3, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the uh, install folder here, and we're just going to drag all of these files in here. Now, the only thing I don't want is I'm going to control click. I don't need the how to install text, and I don't need this readme text. So I'm just going to unhighlight both of those because I don't need those. So now that these are all highlighted. We're just going to drag all of these into our GTA 4 folder, and we're going to let GTA 4 do its thing. So it wants to replace 558 files, so we'll just go ahead and replace and give that a uh, quick second to work its magic. Shouldn't take too long. So now that that's done, um, what I like to do also with my ENB is there's a couple, I don't know what I just said there. There is a couple of optional presets that I prefer to use. So in this case, I like to use the lens flare. I do blue and I do horizontal. So ENB bloom, we'll just go ahead and drag that in there and replace the current one that's in there. Going back to presets, I also like to use the blue headlights preset. So we'll just go ahead and drag the common and ENB sprite picture in here and replace those as well. And then once again, going back. Now with depth of field, for Cry ENB, there's two types. There's a static depth of field and there's an autofocus. Um, static just means that it's always going to be blurry in the background, no matter what. Autofocus is kind of your typical depth of field, meaning if you aim at something or look a certain way, stuff may blur in the background. It may not. I prefer to just use static. So obviously I'm going to do high quality, and then the distance doesn't matter to me because I set my own value. So I'll just use medium, and I'll just drag depth of field config into here. And then, like I said, I use my own value, so I'm just going to open up depth of field config. My text document is over here. And then this value right here, far blur depth, I'm going to change this from 300 to 500. That is what I personally use. You can use, you know, whatever value you wish. You can play around with that. So that is depth of field done. So we'll go back once more. I also use the God rays. I use high quality. So just go ahead and drag that in. And then going back, I also use the HD textures, which I didn't download yet. So I'll do that another time. Um, but it's the same thing. You just drag and drop it and replace what is necessary. 
So uh, that is it when it comes to cry E and B, so we will move on from there. Now, after my E and B, the next thing I like to install right away is LCPDFR. I don't really play with any other mods. I pretty much only have GTA 4 just to use LCPDFR. Um, the one thing I want to mention about LCPDFR, we are on the 1070 patch for this tutorial. So make sure when you go to download LCPD First Response, by default, they have it set to the Legacy Edition. This edition is for the complete edition. We're not on the complete edition, so what you do is when you download this file, um, you can just hit agree and download. Make sure you download LCPD First Response 1.1 manual install. That is what we're using for this tutorial, and this version is fully compatible with the 1070 version. You don't need to use the legacy edition on the 1070 version. So I just wanted to uh, point that out. So, uh, once again, with LCPD First Response, it's pretty much the same process. You're just going to highlight everything, but in here there's a few files I don't want. I don't need these documentation files, and I don't need the uninstall.exe. If you want to keep the uninstaller, by all means, go ahead. I personally don't need it, so I uncheck all those, and then I'm just going to drag all of these in here to my directory and let it do its thing. Um, I don't recall if it needs to replace anything. I don't think it does. Uh, okay, so it needs to replace D sound. That's fine. So we'll just go ahead and do that. Okay, so that's it. LCPDFR is installed. So then after LCPDFR, we're going to go ahead and install our trainer. So the only thing out of here that we actually need is trainer.asi and trainer.ini. Um, the only reason we need these files is because these ones are specific for the Lost and Damned of Adagay Tony, so we don't need those. And this script hook and D sound file, these are already in with the LCPDFR that we just installed. LCPDFR has more updated versions of these two files, so there's zero point for us to use these ones. All right, and finally, what we're going to do is we're going to be installing ELS version 8.5. So open it up. You have a Grand Theft Auto 4 folder, and then in here you have all these folder. Now, again, you have script hook and you have D sound. The best way to tell is to say, so this one was modified 7.13.2010. Now, if we go into our GTA directory and look at D sound, this one was also 7.13.2010, so we don't need that version. Same thing with script hook, 6.11.2011, so we'll look for script hook uh, somewhere in here. Where is it? Right here. 6.11.2011, so we don't need either one of these. So all we, all we will need out of here is, do we have an advanced hook? We do not. Okay. So once again, we're going to highlight everything except for this common folder. Because this common folder has a visual settings file that will not be compatible since we installed the ENB. The ENB already comes with one that's all set up, so we don't need that one. So we just need the ELS folder, we need advanced hook, we need ELS.ASI, and ELS.ini. Now, since our script hook and D sound files are exactly the same, I'm just going to pull them over anyways, because it's not really going to matter. So we'll go ahead and do that. So that is it when it comes to setting up the main files and getting them put into your game. Now, there is one thing I like to do. I'm going to go ahead and refresh this so it's all, uh, you know, sitting correctly. One thing I like to do is I like to configure LCPDFR. So you go into the um, LCPDFR folder and you'll have LCPDFR Diagnostics Tool. Just go ahead and double click that and it's going to open up this window. Now, one thing I like to do is I like to click advanced mode because I want to specifically select where my LCPDFR INI is. Because if you have multiple installations of LCPDFR, the tool may find a different configuration file and you might configure your game for a completely different installation. So I always check advanced mode and then I'm going to do configure LCPD first response. We're going to click on that. This window will open. So then what you'll do is just check your install location. And as you can see, we are in the tutorial series folder, and then we go to LCPDFR. Inside here, we have an LCPDFR.ini file. Just go ahead and click that, and then press open, and then this window is going to open. So the settings I like to use, um, this is all kind of, you know, user preference, whatever you want. Obviously, I want to enable callouts. I prefer to enable hardcore mode, which that's basically just, you know, if you get shot, you kind of do the ragdoll, you take more damage. Um, I believe it's also easier for people to get away from you if they're running, um, that kind of thing. Um, I do not render holster taser on player. I think it's useless, especially since I use custom ped models. It just kind of looks out of whack. Um, I do no camera focus on world events. I disable random police chatter. I skip transporter cutscene. 
And then I uh, do not update crime statistics because I do not care about that anymore. Now, one thing I skipped was preload all models. This one's kind of a hit or miss value, and you'll kind of have to play with this yourself. Basically, what it does is when you first start LCPDFR, it's going to load all the models it needs into the game. So, you know, all the cop models, all the cop cars, that kind of thing. Um, this can help stability for some people, but it can also, you know, decrease stability for some people. So, for me personally, I don't use this value. Um, if you think that it might help your stability, try it. It's kind of one of those things where it's kind of hit or miss. So I guess give it a shot. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to hit the apply button and then hit OK and then go to general settings number two. Now I'm going to disable autosave because I found that if you leave autosaves on and you boot GTA, it tries to, you know, LCP DeFar tries to restore you back to where you were and it just causes a crash. So it is not useful for me. Um, next thing I do is I also disable the boat callouts. I don't care to do callouts in the water, so I don't need to, um, you know, get any of those. And then, uh, that's it for those ones. So just go ahead and pl hit apply under advanced settings. This is where you can modify values. So if you set your callout multiplier, I believe higher. Yes. The higher this value is set, the more likely a callout is being created. So if you are not getting callouts frequently enough, you can try, you know, upping this value, say 500, 750, you know, 800, whatever you want it to be. That is completely up to you. The higher this value is, the more likely you are to get a call. I'm okay with the default value, so I will leave it at 250. Maximum settings before new call out is exactly what it is. So 600, I believe is 10 minutes. Um, so it'll take a maximum of 10 minutes for you to get a call. Uh, minimum seconds is set to 60, so that's one minute. So between one minute and 10 minutes, somewhere in that range, you will get a call. Um, ambient scenarios multiplier. So once again, this is similar to callouts. Ambient scenarios are, you know, like random foot pursuits, or maybe you might get someone stealing a car or something like that. Um, so the higher this value is, the more likely than that is to occur. And then maximum number of ambient scenarios. This just means that, so this value is set to two. So what that means is there can be two random scenarios happening at the same time but only two at one time. So if the game is trying, say there's already two active, the game will not be able to start another one until at least one of the other ones cancels and, and you know, is done. So I like to leave all these values to default, but like I said, if you want to, you know, increase your call out time, do that. If you want to increase how often you get calls, do that, whatever. So I'm just going to go ahead and apply. And then account settings, um, I don't update crime statistics, so I don't care to link my account. You can link your account if you wish. I don't even know if, to be honest, if this still works. Um, so I just don't care to do it. But other than that, that's how you configure LCPDFR. So we'll go ahead and close out of that. And then I'll bring you back to this window. Just go ahead and click close. All right, so that is it. We installed LCPDFR, we installed ENB, we installed Trainer, and we installed ELS. The next thing I like to configure is with ELS. So we'll open ELS.ini. Now in here, there is a combo key which is a set to control. And as you know, to open the ELS control panel, it is control M. Well, that's an issue because if you press control M, it's going to call an ambulance. So what I like to do is I like to just change this value from 17 to 18. And as we know, value 18 is actually alt. So now when you go to open your panel, it'll be alt M instead of control M. That way you will not call an ambulance. Um, this is the only thing I edit for ELS. There are, you know, um, different stuff well actually i guess there is one more setting um ai els for single player i actually turned that off um i found out that if you turn off this um single player ai's els it will improve stability but it does kind of take away from your immersion because you'll have els cars driving around you with zero lights on at all so that is one setting i forgot to mention but those are the only two i edit within els so uh, that's it. So we're going to save that and exit. Okay. So so far we've installed our ENB, we've installed ELS, we've installed LC PDFR, and we've installed the trainer. So our main modifications are at this point complete. There's nothing else we have to do. Now I like to add additional callouts. So our next step here is going to be LC PDFR callouts. So I use three callout packs. There are way more on LC PDFR that you can use, but these are the three that I found to be the most stable. It seems that if you, I don't know if it's, if you run too many or if it's the specific ones, 
but some of them tend to crash. Um, I've had problems with like Wasteland and Rush Hour. They tend to crash, um, but it's all, you know, hit or miss. So I guess give it a shot. So to install these callouts, we actually need to go into a folder called LCPDFR. And then in here, there's going to be a folder called Plugins. But some of these callouts may also install audio. So if these callouts install audio, we're going to also need to go into this audio folder. So for what I'm going to do is I'm going to stay right here in this LCPDFR folder. So the first callout I'm going to install is FinCone's uh, backup callout. So just open that up. And we have a DLL and an INI. So this is just going to go into LCPDFR folder, plugins, and then it's just going to go right here. So you're just going to drag these two files into there. Now, you can open up this INI and you can modify it as you wish. Um, I leave it as default. I don't really have a problem with it. So basically what it means is, you know, if a city unit, it'll say city unit in the text. It'll say state police if it's a state unit. Um, these values right here define which cars will spawn. And then these values right here will, decide, will define which ped model is spawned. As for felon ratio, that's how often felon st felony stops are given. So if you set this to one, you will always have a felony call out. If you set it to five, you'll probably rarely get one. But that is it. Um, I don't really modify that one too much, like I said. So <clears throat> moving on from the backup callout, I use also use Callouts Plus. So we're going to open that up. So now in Callouts Plus, as you can see, we have th uh, three files and an audio folder. So what I like to do is go into the plugins folder of LCPDFR, and then these three files, the INI, the PDB, and the DLL file, all three of these files are, oops, sorry, I accidentally right-clicked when I tried to left-click. So all three of these files are just going to get dragged and dropped right into that plugins folder. Now, once again, you can go into the INI and you can modify these keys. Now, as for me, um, I am American, so I don't use 35 as the drink drive limit. I use 0 0.08, so I will go ahead and modify that myself. And then down here, you have all of these, uh, you know, key presses that you can modify. Um, you know, you can change what health you have to be below before a paramedic will, you know, assist you, all kinds of things. So I am going to go ahead and save that. The only thing I changed in here was the drink drive limit to 0 0.08. You can change whatever else you need to, whatever you see fit. Now, back to Callouts Plus, we still have this audio folder. So what we need to do is go back to LCPDFR, go into audio, and then open up audio over here. And we have a file called Police Scanner. So in here, we'll go inside Police Scanner. That's going to load, and then we'll open this one up. And we just have these ones here. So what we'll do is we'll just grab all these drag them into that audio folder and replace the files that are necessary. And then as far as callout plus goes, that is it. There's nothing else you need to do. So moving on, we will go to uh, Wooters callouts, Wilders callouts. I don't know how to say it. This one sets it up pretty easy because it has an audio and a plugins folder. If you wish to do what I just did and, you know, step through each folder and install it, that is fine. I am just going to drag both of these folders into here. So what we're going to do is we'll go back to that LCPDFR folder where we have audio and plugins, and then we're just going to grab both of these folders, drag them straight into there, just like that. And then once again, we can go into plugins, and now we have uh, Wooters Callouts .ini, So we'll open that up. So in here, you can uh, enable or disable callouts if you wish, and you can also change your key presses for specific callouts. I leave it as default. I like what the default setting is, so I won't edit anything there. All right, as far as LCPDFR callouts goes, we are done. So what we're going to be moving on to now will be all of our extra scripts. So these are scripts that don't necessarily rely on LCPDFR. Um, these scripts can be ran without LCPDFR, but they do work really good um, with LCPDFR. So first one I have is AI Sirens. This just enables the AI to use different siren tones. So for this one, it is a .net.dll folder. This one will go into our scripts folder. So back into your GTA 4 main directory, you have a folder here called scripts. Just open that up and then just drag AI Sirens.net.dll right in there. And then for AI Sirens, that's it. There's nothing else to do. Next one I like to use is ALPR. Um, so just drag both of these. It is another .NET.DLL and an INI. Drag both of those into your scripts folder as well. Now, the only thing I change in here 
is I set my font size from 25 to 20. That is just a lot better font, in my opinion. Um, I play the game at 1080p, so having it at 25, it's a bit large. It's a bit uh, much, I guess. So I change that from 25 to 20, and then that is it. Everything else, I leave how it is. So close that out. Going back, we now have door chime. Door chime is pretty simple, but the only thing with door chime is we do have an extras.iv odd file, which I will get to later in this tutorial. So as of right now, we're just gonna pull door chime.net.dll and .ini into our scripts folder, just like that. Once again, you can open this up and you can edit this. I leave it as default. I don't mind the default values. They work just fine for me, but you can always change them. Now, for this extras.iv odd file, what we're going to do temporarily so we don't forget about it is we're just going to drag it to our desktop just so it's there so we remember it. That is it for door chime. Policing script, yep, you guessed it. Just going to drag both of these right into our scripts folder. Now, I do modify policing a little bit. Uh, for one, I set my unit number to 183 because that's what I like to role play as. You can set that to whatever you want. Um, resisting arrest, I turn this to false because if you leave it at true, 99% of the time when you try to arrest somebody, they just fucking run away and it's really annoying. Next thing, I change my call distance from far to medium. Um, I like traveling a bit of distance for a call because it's a little realistic, but at the same time, I don't like traveling halfway across the map, so I change that from far to medium. With the breathalyzer settings, once again, I am in the US, so I'm gonna change UK to US. I'm gonna change the limit from 35 to 0 0.08. Um, use pictures false, use dialog true. And then once again, down here, you have a bunch of key presses that you can modify to suit your needs. Um, like I said, I don't mind the default key presses, so I'm gonna leave that. Um, I made the few changes up here that I enjoyed to change. So just go ahead and close out of that once again. All right, um, radar gun. Radar gun is a little bit more in depth um, to install because we have to actually modify some stuff within OpenIV. So as of right now, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna drag radargun.net.dll and radargun.ini into our scripts folder. The other files we will get to in a moment. So go into radargun.ini. Once again, you can change these values as you wish. Uh, I enjoy the default values, so I'm just going to leave them as what they are. Now, for this radargun.wdr and this readme, we are once again going to drag both of these to our desktop, and we are going to use them in the future. We won't need them right this second. Realistic gunplay. This one actually does not go in our scripts folder. This one actually goes into um, our main GTA directory. We'll go to common and data, and then both of these files, just drag and drop them into there and replace. The, uh, this file, or this mod, just makes it so that guns actually have some overspray so you're not shooting a perfect line. And I believe it removes the reticle. Um, that one I'm not too sure on, but it definitely makes it so guns have a spread. And I think that guns are a little more powerful as well. So it'll kind of take less shots to kill someone. So moving on, we have seatbelt chime. Seatbelt chime is pretty simple. We just have a scripts folder here. Just go ahead and open that up. And then you will just go back to your GTA directory, go into scripts, and then, yep, you guessed it once again, just drag all of these files in here. Now, once again, you can edit this INI as you wish. Like I said, I prefer to run the default values, so I am done with that script. Going back, we have traffic flow. Now, traffic flow is one that's kind of important especially if you're going to install car mods. So traffic flow, once again, just drops into the scripts folder. But the only thing is we need to make some changes. So what I like to do is I leave the default values as what they are for the models. Um, all this does is it just loads these cars into the game's memory. So there's a higher chance of different cars spawning. It doesn't actually spawn these specific cars. The only thing I do change though is chance of random dispatch. Um, I changed this value to 100. The main reason is I want as little bit of random dispatches as possible because GTA 4 is, it's kind of a game where you have to play by its rules. So if you have the game constantly ticking to create these random dispatches, that's going to create some strain on the game and it might be more prone to crashes. 
So by changing this value to 100, that is like a saying a 1 in 100 chance that a random dispatch will happen. Same thing down here with this timer interval. So what this means is for 15,000, this means that every 15 seconds, uh, the game is going to tick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually use the recommendations right here. To have the game tick every second, or I'm sorry, every minute, set this value to 60,000. So I'm just going to change 15,000 to 60,000 because I don't want the game to tick every 15 seconds. Every minute is fine. Um, you could even change this to 120,000. It would tick every two minutes. Um, that kind of thing. So this is kind of one of those values that you want to play with. If you experience crashes that might be related to this script traffic flow, then up this timer interval. It doesn't really have to be low. It can be pretty high. So anyways, that is the settings I use for traffic flow. So we'll just go ahead and close out of that. And then moving back to our scripts, we now have turn tires. This is once again another one by Fincone. Really love this one. It really adds to your immersion. So in this one, you only have a .NET.DLL. So just go ahead and drag that into your scripts folder. And then next thing, we have all of the um, VDH scripts. So um, first one we're going to actually start with is Police Helper. I know Corner is the first one, but I'm not going to do that. So in here, the only thing we need is we need this VDH Police Helper folder. We need VDH Police Helper.ini. And we need VDH Police Helper .net .dll. The README and the manual, we don't need either one of those, so I'm just going to unselect those. So just go ahead and drag all three of these in the, uh, into your scripts folder. I'm going to give it a little refresh. And then go into VDH Police Helper .ini. Now you can change these values while you're in game. You don't have to change them um, through the you know through the INI. But what I like to do is I like to set no pause to one because then the game will still run in the background while police helper is open um, i like that a lot i'm also going to turn hardcore mode to true because when random events pop up i don't like to know that they're happening i like to be able to see it and catch it myself um let's see i think that's it for everything i do if there's something i missed um i can always change it in game but as far as that, those are the two main values I always edit before I actually go into game. Um, we'll probably look more into that once we actually get in game. As far as VDH Police Helper goes, that is done. The next thing we're going to do is the corner mod. So the corner mod has extras too. So we have to, you know, install a speedo. We have to install a body bag, um, all kinds of things. First thing we're going to do though is go into the scripts folder. And we're just going to drag both of these files into our scripts folder once again. And we're going to go ahead and open the medicalexaminer.ini file. Um, I'm going to set use key to no. The reason for that is because I have VDH Police Helper at this point. I can call a coroner with that. I don't need to use the key press here. As far as the rest of these settings, I leave them at default. Um, I haven't really had much problems with the corner script, um, although too much use and it tends to shut itself down. I don't know if that's something I can edit or not, but anyways, uh, moving on here, we have the body bag and the speedo model and texture. So body bag, um, we are just going to select, I'm going to select the Liberty City texture um, because I like everything to be lore friendly. So I'm just going to go ahead and drag that file to my desktop. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and select a speedo model. So in here, you have the option of using a light bar version or a non light bar version. Um, the light bar is only for looks. It doesn't actually work, but I like to use the light bar. I think it looks neat. So what I'll do is I'll just drag that speedo.wft to my desktop. Same thing. We're going to go to speedo texture and I'm going to use the Liberty city versions because once again, I am a lore friendly person. I don't like using realistic stuff. So we'll go ahead and select Liberty City, and we're going to select, since we used the light bar model here, we're going to select the width light bar here so we get the appropriate textures, and just go ahead and drag that file to your desktop as well. This is all stuff we're going to come back to later. At the same time, I'm also going to drag the VDH README to the desktop so I know where to put this body bag in the future. Going back to our scripts, uh, we have VDH tow service. There really isn't anything special here. Just once again, drag these to your scripts folder and open up your tow service.ini. Once again, you can uh, modify this however you want. I personally just use the default settings. Um, I don't really see any reason to edit them. They work just fine. 
And then going back, we have one more. We have vehicle search. So vehicle search, once again, just drag it into there. And you can edit your I and I once again if you want. Um, I always turn allow grenade drops to false, which I believe it's set to by default. But I think it's stupid to just randomly get blown up when you search a car. So I always turn that off. Um, and then you can obviously change your key press in there if you want. All right, moving on now from extra scripts, we are going to go ahead and move on to using OpenIV. And we are going to start installing some PEDs, vehicles, weapons, and sounds. But we're going to start with our PEDs first. So as far as our GTA directory goes, we are done with it at this point. We don't need it anymore. You can close out that folder. So first thing we're going to do is you'll need to get your PEDs. I am using the um, Enhanced Improved Cop with uh, YCHOP heads. Um, you can use whatever PEDs you want. The installation process will be exactly the same. So when you have your PEDs, what you're going to do is you're going to go down here and open your OpenIV, wherever it may be. In this case, I have it pinned to my taskbar on your desktop, wherever it is. So what you'll do is you go to Grand Theft Auto 4, click Windows, and it needs to find my Grand Theft Auto 4 folder. I originally had this pointed as my directory, but this directory currently doesn't exist. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit Browse, and then navigate for your GTA 4 folder if you need to. So in this case, it's in uh, my E drive, Steam, Steam Apps, Common, and then Grand Theft Auto 4. And then for this video, I'm using my Grand Theft Auto 4 tutorial series copy. So just go ahead and select folder, and then it's going to search. GTA 4.exe version 1070, OpenIV can work. So from here, just click continue. Now, when OpenIV opens up, you will have this window. So first thing you want to do is go ahead and press edit mode. And it's going to say, while in edit mode, all changes will be automatically saved. Just click yes. Okay, so now installing our PED models, what we're going to do is we're going to go to PC. We're going to go to models. CD images, and then we have componentpeds.img and we have pedprops.img. So component peds is your main peds. That's where all of the models are at. And ped props are special attire options like, you know, hats or glasses, you know, stuff like that. So we're going to start with component peds because it's what we're going to need first. So what I'm going to do with the YCHOP peds, I'm just going to do the reskin. Um, I don't care about the extra heads, I just want the different uniforms. So in this case, as you can see, it shows you which files to install where. So we have componentpeds.img, you're just going to go ahead and open that up. And we have mycop, and we have these three files. So what you'll do is just take these three files and drag them straight into OpenIV. And if you want to make sure that works, you can literally just type in the word cop. And then right here you have mycop.wdd, a drawable directory or dictionary, sorry. So then you can just go ahead and you can see your PED model, turn on multiple rendering, you know, you can uh, turn on stuff, you can see that he is working. So from there, uh, we are done installing our PED models. Now, you may have more than one PED model. Uh, in this case, for the tutorial, I'm only installing the one PED model because it's the same process no matter what your PED model is. And you can swap PED models. Um, that might be something for a future tutorial. But so basically, if you say if you wanted this guy to go over the state trooper, you could just come in here and type in trooper. And then right here is your uh, model name for this trooper. So what you would do is you would just take this model name and replace all three of those files with that name and then just drag them in and then he would replace the state trooper. Like I said, for this tutorial, I'm not going to show you, you know, exactly how to do that. I'm just going to show you the basics on how to install them. So at this point, we are done with component PEDs. So we'll just go ahead and, and come up here to the bar and we'll click CD images. And then now we're going to open pedprops.img. And then once again, in our PED model, we'll go back one folder and we'll go to pedprops.img and open that up. And we have both of these uh, prop files here. So we'll just go ahead and once again, drag these into OpenIV. And then once again, if you want to make sure it works, you can just type in cop right here, mycop underscore p, drawable dictionary. Go ahead and open that up, and then there you can see are his uh, glasses and his new hat and, you know, the rain hat. So that is working. That is done. So once again, we're done here. So we'll just go back one to CD images, and then we will go back one. We are done with our um, PED. Now, this one does have a PED variations. You don't need to install that. 
Um, the only thing I think for this particular pet is it would help with um, some of the issues like he may spawn with a belt while he has the raincoat on. Um, it might also add variations like he may randomly spawn with a different hat or glasses. Um, I personally don't care to use this file. Um, it doesn't really ruin my immersion if I don't. If you want to install it, you can. It just goes into the common data folder. Um, but like I said, for the sake of the tutorial, I will not be installing that. So going back once again, we now are moving on to vehicles. So in this case, I'm just using a 2011 Ford CVPI. Um, nothing special here. It's just going to replace the police um, car model. So what we'll do is go back to OpenIV and then right here in CD images, we're going to go down to vehicles.img and open that up. Now what we'll do is we'll take police.wft and police.wtd and we'll just go ahead and drag and drop these. So then once again, we can check if it worked. Just type in police and then open up police.wft. And as you can see, there is our car model. Now, the only thing is because we're using ELS, make sure you install an ELS car model. Um, we will get into installing the INI files for that here in a second. And I'll show you how to turn off ELS because you don't necessarily, I guess I worded it wrong. You don't have to install an ELS car. It's just if you use a non ELS car, make sure that you turn off the car's ability to use ELS because you don't want it to, you know, be turned on, but it's not actually ELS. So in this case, we're using an ELS model. Um, so we'll just go ahead and close out of here. So now what also we have is we have this INI file. And if you open it up, you can see that it is an ELS configuration file. So I'm just going to leave that at default. I don't want to mess with it. But what we need to do actually is I know I told you guys to close your GTA 4 directory, but we're actually going to go back to it. So GTA 4, we'll go to tutorial series. Okay, so then in here, there's a folder called ELS. You're going to go into that folder. And then this INI right here, you're just going to go ahead and drag and drop that into that ELS folder. Now, the one thing we have to do here, though, is um, we need to enable this INI to be read by the police uh, car. So what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and the easiest way I do this is I just right click and rename and it'll highlight the uh, text file name. And then from here, just go ahead and hit control C to copy it. And then you're going to go into this file right here that says slot control INI, open that up. And then when you're in here, you're just going to look for the model that says police. So what we want to do is we want to change file from default key, default config. I don't know what I tried to say there. Um, just go ahead and delete that and then control V and paste, paste in the um, text file that is named for the appropriate model. So in this case, it's BOZ underscore CVPI. So then just go ahead and save and close that. All right. And then just because I'm not sure if we have to come back here, I'm just going to minimize that directory. Not really 100% sure if we have to come back. Okay. But as far as um, OpenIV goes, you can go ahead and go back to CD images. Oh, and one thing I forgot to mention, if you're inside these image files and say we're in this image file and we type police, you know, it'll pull up our police cars. But then if we go back, it's going to say there's nothing here. So what you'll do is come up here to the search bar and just click this little X in the right. And that'll get rid of the cleared search and you'll be able to, you know, go through everything else. Now, next thing moving on is we have weapons. So in this case, I'm going to be installing four different weapons. Um, you can install, you know, however many you need or what you need, um, whatever. It's up to you. So in this case, I'll be using an ASP baton, which is going to replace the bat. So what we'll do is we will go into weapons.img. And then we will just pull these two files into OpenIV. We will go back. This time we're going to be using Glock 7. Or Glock 17, sorry. I'm going to be using the black version. So what we'll see here is we have the base model, which is the WDR. This is our actual model. So we'll go ahead and drag that into OpenIV. And then from here is where you'd pick your texture. So in this case, I want to use the black one. So I'll just select the black texture. It's a WTD. Just go ahead and pull that in as well. And then we'll go back once more. We have an MK18. Um, this one is, you know, replacing the M4. So I will go ahead and replace that in OpenIV. Now, this particular uh, weapon actually comes with a weapon info.xml. 
Um, I'm not going to use this because earlier we installed the um, increased, you know, gunplay accuracy, whatever it was. So that already has modified data for the M4. So I don't want to replace this one because now I'll just revert what I did earlier. You can install it if you want. Um, like I said, I'm not going to go into too much detail about modifying these. You know, uh, that may be for another tutorial. As for this tutorial, I'm only installing the M4 files. I don't care about weapon info. So we'll just go back, and then the final weapon, we have a tactical shotgun. So in this case, um, I think I'm going to use the one that has an aim point on it. I know it's probably not ideal for a shotgun, but, I mean, it's a video game. So we'll just go ahead and pull both of these in there into open IV once again. And then, finally, uh, actually, one thing I want to mention is this shotgun actually came with a sound file. Um, you don't have to use this. Um, there is tutorials. I'm sure somebody has made a tutorial on how to install sound files. Um, I'm not going to go into that much detail because, once again, that would probably be something for its own tutorial. Um, I don't think it's necessary for this one. So, finally, the last thing we have are sounds, and then we need to install the rest of the stuff that's on our desktop. So, in our sounds, we have two sounds. So, I have a Touchmaster Delta, which I'm going to actually drag out into this folder. And I'll go ahead and delete this folder. So, we actually have two um, sound files. Actually, no, we don't because this is a good time to go back to our desktop. We're going to go back to our desktop, and this extras.ivod file, what we're going to do is we're just going to drag this into here, because we need to install this now too. So the only thing about installing sound files into OpenIV is this .ivod at the end of it, we cannot use it. So what you need to do is just right-click and rename, and then the .ivod, just go ahead and remove that so it's just horns. Windows is going to ding at you and it's going to say, if you change file name, extension file might become unusable. Just go ahead and click yes. It's okay that it's it's like this now. So now it just says horns and it's just listed as a file. You're going to do the same thing for every um, audio file that we will be installing. So once again, click yes and then do the same thing for weapons. Click yes. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to OpenIV. And this time we're just going to go, so up here at the bar, just go ahead and click on GTA 4 just to go back to the main uh, directory. And what we're going to do at this point is we're going to go to PC, we're going to go to audio, we're going to go to sound effects, and then in here is where you want to install um, everything. Well, sorry, not everything. So the first thing we want to do, actually I lied, is we need to go to resident.rpf. Don't take my word, don't install your files back to where they just were. In here is where you want to install everything. So as you can see, we have weapons, we have horns, and we have extras. So there's two ways you can do this. You can just drag and drop and replace um, each of these files. Personally, what I like to do is I like to delete each one because then I know it's been replaced. So in this case, extras, I'm just going to right click and I'm just going to delete, click yes. I'm going to do the same thing for horns, right click, delete, click yes. And I'm going to do the same thing for weapons, right click, Delete, click yes. Okay. Now we're going to do is go back to our folder and we're just going to drag these three files into OpenIV. And as you can see, they are back. So there's horns, there's extras, and there's weapons. So that is it. Our sound files are installed. They are done. They are completed. There's nothing else we have to do. The final thing we have to do, however, is we have to actually finish up the stuff that we had to do earlier. So we're going to go back to our main directory in OpenIV. And then this folder I have here, I'm just going to close it because I no longer need it. So, um, let's see, what do we have? So we have a Speedo model, which I actually should have installed earlier, and it would have kind of helped on time. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back PC, Models, CD Images, Vehicles.img. We're going to open this up. So this Speedo model came with that corner mod we installed earlier. So what we're going to do is we're just going to drag it in there. And then once again, if you want to check it, you can just type Speedo. There's your model, open it up, and as you can see, we have our medical examiner uh, van installed with our little light bar on it. So the next thing is we can go ahead and delete Speedo now because we don't need it anymore. So now we have two files left before we can actually go in game and test. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with um, the corner bag since we are already on it. So if we open up our readme file and we go down to our install instructions, Let's see, where is it? Um, right here. 
Yeah, so right here is what we need. So what we're going to do is go back to OpenIV. We're going to go back up to our bar, and we're going to go back to the main directory of GTA 4. And then what you want to do is you want to go to PC. You want to go to Data, uh, Maps, um, Props, Roadside, and then you're going to look for rubbish.img, which is right here. And then what you're going to do is this cjbin underscore bag. Just go ahead and drag and drop that into here. And then once again, if you want to check it, just do cj um, underscore bin. And then here it is right here at the front. So as you can see, that is now a body bag. I believe by default it was a trash bag. So I guess technically you don't have to replace this, um, but it just kind of adds to your immersion to have actual body bags laying at the scenes. So once again, we are done with this. So we're going to go ahead and trash both of these. All right, and then we're going to go back to GTA 4, back to our main uh, directory. And the final thing we have left to install is our radar gun. So we're going to click no because we don't care about that file anymore. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is right here, go into your GTA 4. So we'll go back to OpenIV. So GTA 4, PC, data, uh, maps, props, uh, commercial. Okay, why we're in here. It says openbeauty.ide. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually extract this file. So we're going to actually just drag and drop this file from OpenIV onto our desktop. And then you may have to right click and open it with Notepad. In this case, I set it to open with Notepad++. So what we'll do is just double click it and open it up. And then inside of our radar gun, we have this line here on 24. We just want to take this entire line. Go ahead and copy, and then we're just going to go right here underneath line one, or press enter, create a new line, and then control V and paste that line. And then go ahead and save and close that out. We are done with that. Now what we need to do is we actually need to install the beauty.ide. So go ahead and right click, delete the one that's in there, and then drag and drop the new edited one in there. Like I said, that is what I prefer to do. You can do that however you want. You can just drag and replace. It is completely up to you. The final thing we have to do is why we're in this commercials folder is we have to go to beauty.img, open that up, and then this radar gun, we are just going to drag and drop this into here. And then that is it. We are done with OpenIV, so you can go ahead and exit edit mode and then exit OpenIV. And then these three files, we no longer need them, so we will just go ahead and trash them. All right, so from this step, what we're going to do is we're going to go in game and we are going to make sure everything is working. Alrighty guys, already here we are right off the bat. As you can see, obviously our E and B is working. So what we're going to do is we're just going to run outside real quick just to double check. I mean, it's very clear that it's running. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and run away from this guy because he is ridiculously loud. So uh, it's very clear that our E and B is working. So that's a very good sign. Next thing is we press F3. We have our trainer. Um, I personally like to go into options and go to the second page and then set menu colors and font. I personally set mine to five. You can set yours to whatever you want. Um, I also like to do stuff like, you know, turn on the clock, you know, enable miles per hour, and then we'll go to second page, um, save settings. Okay, so that's what I like to do with my trainer. Um, a couple things we can actually test. I need to run away because that guy is still really loud I mean for you guys it'll be fine because I'll edit it um, a couple things I like to test before we test out LCPFR is just kind of make sure our stuff is working so once again using the trainer we'll go down here to weapons we'll go ahead and remove all of our weapons go ahead and spawn ourselves a baseball bat which is an ASP baton nice um, give ourselves a pistol which is clearly a Glock nice um, our shotgun just our tactical shotgun with <laughs> got that little red dot looks so stupid but whatever um, and now obviously our M4, nice, looks really good. Okay, so this is a good sign. Next thing is we can go to model spawning, and you know we can spawn ourselves the cop model. Where is it? It's on page six. So spawn the cop model, and obviously as you can see, um, everything is working. Alrighty, so what we need to do now is we need to make sure all of our um, LCPDFR stuff is working. So there's two ways you can go about this. You can press Alt P. Uh, well, either way, you have to press Alt-P. So now you can either go to a police station and go on duty, or what I like to do is press the tilde key 
And once that, oh, okay. So one thing I need to mention is open your trainer with F3. Why is it not working? Okay, anyways, open your trainer with F3. I don't know why it didn't open. Uh, go to options, and then you're going to go to page two, I believe it is. Where is it? Um, oh, yeah. Uh, wait, what? Where is it at? Looking for one that says enable disable keys. I think I'm looking right at it. Okay, so it's on page one. Enable disable keys, turn that off, and then go to page two and save your trainer settings. Because you don't want a random taxi to spawn every time you type. So anyways, you press Alt P, press the tilde key, and then in here type force duty, all one word, and then boom. There you see backup callouts running, callouts plus is running. LCPDFR is telling us it's our first time. It is a new installation. So that is obvious. Now we want to test a few of our stuff just to make sure it's working. So if I press X, I can open up VDH Police Helper. If you find your mouse and let's say call for services, you know, we got corner there. We got tow truck there. Um, what else? We got, you know, we can check people's ID with this. Oh, and then this, if you press X and you go to settings, this is where you can edit your I and I for VDH Police Helper right in the game. You don't even have to go out of game to edit anything. So, I, like I said, for now, I'll just leave it as default. I'm not too worried about it. Next thing we want to do is we want to test that um, our ELS is working. So, we'll go to the trainer, go to page three, and spawn police model. In this case, that is what the model I replaced. It may be something different. Right off the bat, we can hear that our seatbelt chime is working that we installed, also along with our door ajar chime. So, if the door would stay open, there you go. You can hear your door dinging your door charge chimes working so now with ELS if we press J uh, okay this one is set to jump right away and it is ridiculously fast so we're gonna actually edit that once we go out of game so but as we can see uh, right off the bat our ELS is working for press G we can hear that siren we just installed also the next thing we should probably test is to make sure that our gun sounds are working so we're not gonna take that call I'm actually gonna press F7 turn myself off of calls right now so if we just go ahead and shoot this lady here We can hear that our gun sounds are working just fine. We even try with our M4 Yep, that sounds amazing. So our gun sounds are working our uh, ELS cars are working as you can see our turn tire script is working because my tire is turned um, ELS is working our ENB is working our ped models are working um VDH is working. Um, if you press Alt Delete, that will turn on your VD or sorry, not Police Helper. It'd be Bravehearts Police Helper. So we can see that that's working. Um, it showed the correct unit number. It's going to give me a call any second, which I don't care to take one to be honest. So I'm just going to turn that back off. Um, what else? Uh, if we press F5, we can open up our ALPR. So if I turn around here and you know I just look at these uh, these cars. There you go, it's scanning them, it's giving me their license plate, so everything is working there. Um, same thing, if we walk up to a car and we press the F6 key, in the top left there, searching vehicle dukes for drugs, no drugs were found. So, pretty much that is it, you guys. Um, that is how, from start to finish, how I install and configure my LCPDFR. Um, in the description, there will be a link for, you know, all the mods and everything I installed in this video. Um, I do hope this tutorial helped. I am apologize that it was cut. What the fuck is happening? <laughs> Anyways, uh, I hope this tutorial helped. Um, I apologize it was kind of long, but yeah. Thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you all next time.